What's going on everybody? Today we're making an apocalypse style mask, which is perfect for costumes, cosplay, or the, or the end of the world. Before we get started, remember that you can pick up the patterns and artwork for all my projects on my website, Etsy shop, or Patreon. There'll be a link right here for you guys, or you can check out the description of this video. Today's video is brought to you by Lonsdale Leather, where you can pick up all sorts of tools, supplies, and of course, leather. Be sure to check out the link to their website in the description below. Now, I don't usually tape patterns down like this, and for sure this isn't something that I would ever regularly do beyond showing you guys a video. But if you're just doing a one-off piece, this is a pretty good way of doing it. You just tape your pattern down to your leather, and then you punch all of your holes, and then you cut around it. Not everybody can afford to have a bunch of different oblong punches. I use a few different sizes in this video. You can punch two holes and cut between them if you'd like. Always make sure your blades are as sharp as possible before cutting and that's what I'm doing here. It's a fresh blade and I'm stropping it to give it a little bit of extra edge. You gotta be careful that you don't cut through in the wrong spot and mangle your holes. They are pretty close to the edge. Sometimes you need to press the paper down a little bit to make sure you're getting the right cut. And this can be very dangerous if you're not careful. You gotta watch out for all your digits because the last thing you wanna do is cut the end. Oh, damn. So obviously be a little more careful than I was. I cut a tiny bit of the end of my finger off. It hurt a lot. But after a little bit of crazy glue, we're back to cutting. And this time with our fingers a little further away from the edge. Now just bevel everything both sides. I don't bevel where I've darted the front center of the mask because I want it to butt up as nicely as possible when I stitch it. But otherwise I'm beveling both sides of the whole thing. When I did this video, I used the same thickness leather for the straps as I did for the main construction of the mask. That's not right. Make sure your leather is a little thinner because especially at the back of the head, you're going to have to stack through four layers of leather to get your rivet in. So it should be at least like four or five ounce maybe. While we're blowing through all these straps, this is a good time to remind you that if you are part of my Patreon, you get all the patterns and artwork that I produce for that month for the same Patreon cost. So if you are subscribed to my $5 patterns, you get every single pattern that I've released without artwork. If you're subscribed to my $9 patterns and artwork, you get all the patterns that I release that also include artwork. Well, or don't, you get, you get both. Or just individual art for $5 a month. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. When I want to dye some leather all the way through and I'm feeling super lazy, this is the way to do it. I've got my black dye bucket. Now, because this is going on your face, you may want to use a chrome tan or something pre-dyed so there's a lot less bleed. But I'm just doing it this way. And I'm going to put a bit of a finish on the back and hope for the best. Make sure you buff in between anything crazy. Buff between burnishing, buff between dyeing, buff between putting a finish on it, etc, etc. I've been having a lot of problems figuring out how to put this token all on well. This is the best thing I've come up with so far. Somebody suggested these tiny little, um, almost syringe-like bottles, and I've ordered some, so when they get here, I'm going to have a, these little bottles to put the token all on, and hopefully that'll solve everything. But for now, I'm still screwing around. Obviously, I used my hand burnisher there, and then I went straight to my wheel because... I can, because I have the wheel, and it's pretty handy.
I have a spray gun for finishes, but this time I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. You want a sponge with some water, you get the sponge wet, you squeeze out the most of the moisture, you dip your sponge in your finish of choice, and then you wipe it on. Now, you don't want it to be super pooled like this, so after I put it on, I would go over it once more and just make sure it's not really crazily loaded up with finish. And then after I do the tops of all these and I let them dry, I'll do the back. After the top is dried, be sure to buff it lightly with some sheep's wool. I don't always use wax thread, but I'm using it this time. It's really good because once you pull certain edges together, it, they don't slip out as easily. And so this join, because it's curving a little bit as you pull it together, I found wax thread really useful here. Once again with a little bit of fire. When I make keepers, I stitch them inside out and then flip them, and that conceals the stitches. You'd want to burn the stitch there, cut it a little shorter, but otherwise it's good to go. And then it's just time for some rivets. pattern has a lot of space for you guys to make it your own so be creative with it make sure you like subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss any of my future videos and until next time keep on being creative in whatever it is you do